Hi everyone and welcome to Back in Time Fiction. In this video I intend to fix a big mistake of mine, I haven't yet properly introduced my debut novel to you, so here we go. It feels a bit weird to talk about my own book, so instead of focusing on uh, Yellow Sky Revolt, I will talk about the context of the story, The Three Kingdoms of China, and then I will tell you more about uh, this novel at the end of the video. Alright, let's go back to 2nd century China. This video is going to be a very general introduction to the topic of the Three Kingdoms of China, but as I intend to write a fairly long series on this uh, period, I plan to give you more details on the era, for example the characters, uh, some amazing stories, the sources where you can get more on the topic and much more. So if you like the Three Kingdoms of China or if you want to know more about it, uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel, you are in for a treat. So, what are the Three Kingdoms of China, why do so many people love this story, and why should you read my book? Let's answer those questions. Alright, so, the Three Kingdoms, what is it? To make it short, the Three Kingdoms of China is the period that followed the Han Dynasty, and as you can guess from the name, during that period, China was divided in three. Officially, the Three Kingdoms started in 220 CE, when the last emperor of the Han Dynasty, Liu Xie, abdicated his throne, all the way to 280 when the last remaining kingdom was conquered. Less officially though, the period preceding the fall of the Han Dynasty is also very often included into the general Three Kingdom history, uh, so we are looking at a start around the year 184 when a peasant slash religious rebellion took over a very big part of China. More on that later. So we are looking at a period of roughly 100 years and what a busy period the Three Kingdoms was. During that time you can hardly find a year, especially at the beginning, without some sort uh, of epic battle, some kind of event that really shook the empire. Some census made before the fall of the Han Dynasty claimed that China had a population of around 60 million people, and after the Three Kingdoms another census claimed that the population decreased to 16 million people. Um, now a lot can be said about the accuracy of those census or, or the method put in place to register the population, but the point is there, it was probably a very tough moment to be alive. To put it back in context, the Han Dynasty was the first unified great dynasty of Chinese history. It lasted about 400 years from 202 BCE to 220 CE, with a short intermittence in the middle and it put the basis on much of the Chinese culture. It wasn't going to go down easy and it sure didn't. Many reasons can be put forward to explain the end of the Han Dynasty, from the typical corrupted system, the expensive and usually failed campaigns against the neighbors in the north, mostly, the weakening of the professional army, the constant power struggles at court and some intense catastrophes. But the first big clear trigger of this downfall was the Yellow Turban Uprising. <laughs> The Yellow Turbans were followers of the Way of the Great Peace, a movement instigated by the religious leader Zhang Jue, or Zhang Jiao, and his two brothers. In a very short time, their ideals became very popular in the northeast of China, and in 184, they rebelled against the court and hundreds of thousands of regular folks took arms and fought the power. It didn't work. The beginning was spoiled by a traitor, they probably didn't have much food, it didn't last a year. And nevertheless, the name Yellow Turbans would reappear here and there for a while, and they still managed some great successes at the beginning of the rebellion. More than that though, they revealed the weaknesses of the power in place and they basically prepared the land for all the ambitious warlords who lived in China at the time. Soon after, an ambitious officer from the frontier used the turmoil shaking the capital, Luoyang, and basically took control of the court and the young emperor. This officer's name was Dong Zhuo, and let's say he didn't go down in history as a beloved character. Several officials and warlords decided to gather in order to bring an end to the tyranny of Dong Zhuo, and this was the last time for the next 90 years or so that a semblance of cohesion could be, found, uh, could be felt in the empire. The campaign against Dong Zhuo failed, those warlords went back to their lands, they started to fight against each other, until three of them 
uh, manage to carve themselves a nice piece of land. Now, very sorry if I'm being uh, a little bit vague here, it's just that the campaign against Dong Zhuo is the beginning of book two of my series, which will be released in March. I don't want to spoil too much, but you know, you can easily find more information on that exact moment of the Three Kingdoms story. Those three lords who thrived through the chaos are Cao Cao, who put down the basis of the Cao Wei state, Liu Bei, who founded the Shu Han kingdom, and Sun Quan, son of Sun Jian, brother of Sun Tzu, who ruled the Dongwu kingdom for a while. At first, and for quite some time, um, Sun Quan and Liu Bei were allies, and they decided to fight uh, Cao Cao together, because Cao Cao was the mightiest of the three, but came a time when the Dongwu kingdom betrayed the Shu Han kingdom for some very understandable reason, and then it was on for 60 years of tense relationship between those three neighbors. There you go, you have a basic idea of what is the three kingdoms period of China. Basically, it's one of the bloodiest civil war of the human history. Now, why do so many people love it? Well, to be fair, what most people love about the Three Kingdoms is the story rather than the history. For a very long time, from the time it happened actually, the Three Kingdoms birthed an incredible amount of tales. There was a lot of propaganda from one kingdom about the other, and some of those stories aimed at destroying the image and legacy of their enemies stuck and became part of the popular culture. We'll talk more about this in a future video, but from the moment it ended, the history of the Three Kingdoms was recorded within biographies of all most important men of that time by the scholar Chen Shou from the fallen Shu Han Kingdom. More historians and scholars worked on recording the history of that period over the centuries until it reached its next big step, the writing of the Romance of the Three Kingdoms by Luo Guanzhong. The Romance of the Three Kingdoms is one of the four classics of Chinese literature, and it is more concerned by the story than the history, with some events being attributed to the wrong characters, uh, you have weapons that didn't exist at the time in this romance of the Three Kingdoms, then you also have a little bit of magic, and you also have entire storylines being made up. Now seriously, what kind of writer does that? I don't know. The Romance is an amazing novel, and it is the source material for many, many other formats of storytelling, from theater to TV series, and of course, radio shows all over China. But it has aged, and overall, is maybe not the best way for everyone to fall in love with the Three Kingdoms. In fact, I do believe that the great majority of people who know the Three Kingdoms, outside of China at least, started with video games, and no other video game has spread the greatness of the Three Kingdoms better than the Dynasty Warriors series from Koei Tecmo. Again, we will talk more about this uh, topic in a future video, but for now, it suffices to say this series of hack and slash game has been going on for more than 25 years and has produced nine main titles plus a bunch of related games. Dynasty Warriors is directly responsible for the spreading of the love of the Three Kingdoms, uh, outside of Eastern Asia at least, and for this guy's passion as well. That's right, if you have enjoyed Yellow Sky Revolt, it is in part thanks to Dynasty Warriors. Actually, it's really because of Dynasty Warriors 4. While we are at it, quick question guys, and feel free to pause the video for a second, but I would really like to know how you got to know the Three Kingdoms, and who is your favorite character, and who is the one you hated the most, so please put your answer down uh, in the comments. I'm just curious here. Whatever the format people enjoy their 3K story on, there are several elements that always please, starting with the characters. The greatest strength of this tale is without a doubt the plethora of amazing characters. Is it plethora? Plethora? Anyway, there are plenty. In the romance alone, there are something like 1,200 names. Granted, most of them are men, and the few women named are not always painted in a positive manner. And a bunch of guys are named once before being slain, but the others are really cool. Most characters associated with the Three Kingdoms did exist, with a few notable exceptions, and what might have been at the beginning a neat collection of fairly impressive dudes turn into a roster of larger-than-life characters, some of whom achieved a legendary level of fame. Among the most famous names we have, of course, the three founding leaders uh, of the Three Kingdoms, especially Cao Cao, who became a figure of cunning and authority in the Chinese culture. 
In Chinese, the equivalent to speak of the devil is say Cao Cao and Cao Cao arrives, a pretty spooky trait that recently brought the funding of a transportation company called Cao Cao, because, well, you call them and you get it, I guess. Zhuge Liang is also a super famous character from that story. He is the genius of his time, a peerless strategist and administrator who managed to shift the balance of power with his plans. Several inventions supposedly came from his great mind, like, for example, the wheelbarrow. That's pretty impressive. We also have Zhang Fei, a man who once stopped an army with his shout, Zhao Yun, the brave warrior who rescued his lord's baby from behind the enemy lines, Lu Bu, the strongest fighter in the land, and and Guan Yu, since then titled the God of War of China. There is a video about this guy on my channel, by the way. Those are a few examples of badass characters, but there are seriously at least a couple of hundred more in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. With time, they became more symbols than actual characters with traits so thick, they sometimes appear more like archetypes from fables rather than real people. You have, for example, the benevolent Liu Bei, the loyal Guan Yu, the greedy Dong Zhuo, etc, etc. It's not just the characters, though. The conflict is excellent. It's like a game of Wei Qi being played on an empire-sized board, with many pieces being manipulated by genius tacticians, luck, betrayals, and so on. It's extremely rich. There is so much to love about the Three Kingdoms, and so many ways to discover it. I really hope you will consider Yellow Sky Revolt as one. Now, this one is the first book in a series I intend to be 10 books long, plus potential for some novellas as well. The second one is coming in March 15, so two months from now. Contrary to the romance, this series is from the point of view of a central character, namely Liao Hua, a fairly minor general from the Shuhan Kingdom who boasts the incredible claim of having lived through most of that era. Now, when I say minor, I mean in the romance of the Three Kingdoms, because in reality, he was probably badass, as he is in my series. Anyway, as I mentioned, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms has aged a little and is not always discovery-friendly. The prose can be a bit dry and just the number of characters is fairly overwhelming. On my side, I wrote it in a way that I hope will remind the readers of historical fiction writers like Bernard Cornwell, Jazz Christian, Robert Lowe, and so on. I am not comparing myself to them, by the way, I am just saying I'm trying to get in the same direction as they are. That's it. <laughs> Basically, I am writing this series in a Western way, with the goal of getting people who are maybe not used to Asian settings to enjoy this story and discover the Three Kingdoms of China. It's a little bit weird to talk about my own book, so what I will do is link uh, video reviews from amazing booktubers in the description uh, as they talk about my book, so please go check those reviews when you have a second, and don't forget to subscribe to their channel while you are at it. It will most likely sound more honest. For now, all I want to say is that if you know a little bit about the Three Kingdoms, or a lot, you should enjoy this one. And if you don't know anything about it, please know that I wrote this book with the intention of getting you into it. One of my priorities was to make this story uh, available to you, accessible to you, so feel free to give it a try. Yellow Sky Revolt is available in uh, paperback and ebook on Amazon, and Heroes of Chaos, the next volume, can be pre-ordered, at least a Kindle version, uh, on Amazon as well. I will leave the links uh, in the description of this video. And if you have enjoyed this book, please, please, please leave a review, give me some stars. Uh, if you didn't like it, you know, just forget it, that's fine. It would be super appreciated. That's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will come back very soon with more content on the very best genre of literature. That's uh, historical fiction, by the way, or simply on the Three Kingdoms. Until then, grab a book, potentially mine, enjoy, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.